Go. Laura Mia, thank you. Second Hi, Martin. Attempt, second attempt. I'm really sorry. Yeah. It's my first. It's my first technical bloop, and I've had a big one there. So I'll tell. I'll tell my friends about it later. At least my camera's moving now. That's good. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Uh, let's get fired straight into questions. Um, yeah. Your first name, please. My first name is Laura. And the rest, sorry. Christine Muir. Christine. And the relevance of the Christine. Um, that's my aunt's name, my mum's sister. Oh, that's nice. Um, cool. And your home area? I live just outside Glasgow. Um, so I've always grown up in the west of Scotland area. It's interesting, isn't it? It's so popular in the west, Badminton. Um, uh, do you have any brothers? Or, do you have any brothers or sisters, Laura? Yeah, I've got three brothers and one sister. Um, the I've got a much younger brother and sister um, who are 19 and 21. So uh, James is 19 and Beth is 21. And my other two brothers are in their mid 30s. So, um, wow. Yeah. And do many of them play badminton? Um, so my younger brother and sister, Beth and James, um, did, did play badminton uh, up to their um, up to recently, actually, but just in a social sort of way. Um, and also my brother, Andrew, um, who's now a, a teacher through um, in Edinburgh. We used to play when he was younger as well. Um, we just used to organise games um, at the local sports centre and go down and play singles. He was quite an interesting player because he didn't have any backhand. But what he did have was the ability to change hands and play no with his hands. No. <laughs> so it was really uh, weird. And I've been trying to get him to get back into it um, and join the Edinburgh Badminton Academy because yeah. I think it provides some good entertainment for everyone. Wow. And is that genuinely part of his game? He swaps hands? Yeah, he said, you know why go to a backhand we can just swap hands. But he's, he's quite see, he's quite good with his left hand as well. You get people strong, he's just, strong, he can clear, yeah. proper clear. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. Wow. You can imagine, I mean, I've got nothing on my left hand. It just feels wrong, doesn't it? When you, when you think yeah. about it. Yeah. I actually know a guy, there's a guy that plays at North, um, North Morningside and he's left-handed and he receives serve. He's left-handed, right? But when he's receiving serve, he receives it holding the racket with his right hand. Right. Right. And then just at the point of hitting, he swaps hands. So when people serve to him, they think they're serving to a right handed person. And of course, it, it's genius. It's absolute genius. So he's standing there with the racket in his right hand, but he's left handed. So yeah. when you're serving to him, it just totally screws you up. You're just thinking, I don't know what's going on here. Yeah. You just do that quickly, exchange hands. And it's, yeah. you know, it's like when you play to a left hander, right? If you think you're. That's his backhand. He normally play it to somebody's backhand, right? So if you, yeah. that's his forehand, you know? You know, just like, I hate playing left-handers, to be fair. I'm not great at all. But he's right. Did you say he's right-handed and he can play his left? Yeah, that's right, yeah. And so obviously a big family of badminton players. Do your, do your parents play at all? Uh, my dad used to play um, until maybe five years ago. Um, and I used to play with my dad weekly um, from about age 10 till I went to university. Uh, and into university as well, I guess. So maybe 10 to 19, we used to play weekly. Um, we used to play singles and also meet up with his friends to play uh, doubles with them. Because he had a friend that played and he had a son who was a similar age to me, so it worked quite well. Really? And did, could you beat your dad? Uh, I didn't beat him until I was 19. So he was, <laughs> yeah. Um, and we have a, a running laugh about it um, because... My grandpa was used to say to him, come on, Alan, let her win a game. And he'd be like, eh, no, she'll win a game when she's ready to win a game. So he never gave me any cheap points or anything. I don't think he beat me to zero. Um, and even in the old scoring system that we played when I was in primary school, um, I think it, I think we played to either 11 or 15. I can't remember, but I don't think there were any 11 nils or anything, but... Uh, he certainly wasn't going to let me win for my time. And then when I did beat him when I was 19, that was it. Onwards and upwards for me. Yeah, I was going to say. And th at that point, did he want to stop playing with you then? Did he stop, you know, and he, was he really keen to play with you whenever he was beating you? And then when you started winning, he was like, no, nah, I can't really be bothered. No, I think he was still quite grateful to play and, and get the exercise. He just wanted to, to keep fit and run about. Is it all sorts of sports, your dad? 
Yeah, well, he's more into golf now uh, yeah. because um, he's had to stop playing in the last five years. Um, so he, he keeps himself busy with lots of long walks and, and he goes golf. he goes to this golf most days. So um, And he, he used to play tennis and various other sports when he was younger as well. Uh, but it was it was really um, it was my dad that got me into it, and then that was a uh, further reinforced by the badminton club that I went to in primary six. We had quite a keen um, badminton player um, in the school as a teacher, so she ran a little club. We just had one court in the gym hall, and uh, and she she tested us all out to see who who could go forward in the team. So what age were you then, was that? Sorry? Um, about 10, 11. Um, but I'd already been playing with my dad, so my hand-eye um, eye coordination was already quite good. And I was already in the netball team and playing tennis um, and all the other things. It was just Netball's amazing. quite good for badminton, isn't it? Got um, shoulder strength. Yeah. Um, and in netball, I was goal attack, so I was able to run around and shoot goals. So I had um, that, that was the best position for me because I liked that. I didn't only want to be shooting goals and I didn't only want to be running around. I liked the fact that you could have um, the best of both, really. So I got a netball um, hoop outside the, my garden and I used to practice. Did you? Yeah, in the rain. <laughs> and you did all sorts of other things as well, instruments, musical as well. Are you, are you still musical as well? But What was the instrument? I used to play the clarinet and I still have the clarinet. Um, I got to grade eight. So I did did quite well, um, and I used to play in concert bands. The is it clarinet band. like the recorder? Is it like that? Is that a kind of thing? Is it clarinet? Is it? Do you play um, the recorder as well? Oh no, really. No. I started off with the recorder when I was about primary six or seven, but um, you know, I, the clarinets obviously got a. Um, oh, I don't want to say a better sound, but um, yes. a more distinct sound, yes. and uh, you need a reed to to play it, and then the stronger the reed the better sounds you get but you need stronger uh, cheek muscles for it so now i mean now and again i go and pick it up to see if i can still play it but i've got to go down to a lower reed because uh, otherwise my cheeks get sore because i'm not trained anymore exactly. yeah I no i i had absolutely no idea and then but that, that you're committed to that as well right you used to go to you to get to level eight you've got to spend a lot of time on that as well i guess yeah, so every Saturday morning I used to have to go and do my theory of music at Paisley Grammar School um, and that was quite tough getting up at seven o'clock on a Saturday morning. I'd do theory all Saturday morning, then I'd have my practical lesson. I'd practice every night as well. And then in this alternate Saturday and Sunday afternoons, it meant that um, I, ha I had my practice for the concert bands and then we had performances as well in town halls and stuff. So I was really quite busy with... Uh, the music. the clarinet so that made competing quite difficult i did do some competitions um as a junior but i suppose my priority was more um so what age was that what age was that you're developing all that clarinet stuff is that kind of 10 to 16 um, or something or was that probably uh primary seven so age 11 until um fourth year when i did my standard grades music so probably uh, age 16 is when I went to university at 17 I didn't play anymore there wasn't an actual orchestra at Stirling University and then my, my focus changed to badminton at that point you certainly seem to be kind of somebody that's very focused when you're in it you're in it you do it you do it you're you know you're all in or you're not in at all kind of idea um and it's uh, it's interesting how you you obviously your focus has moved and and when you played all that time you must you're playing just once a week with your dad then did they continue that when you those years of 10 to 14 15 you were still playing badminton once a week with your dad i guess right uh yeah um so my, my parents weren't together um after age 13 so it was a way for me to spend time with my dad at the weekend and That's do it. something that we both liked so yeah. uh, we, we did keep that routine and even when I went to university in first year, I used to come back at the weekends because Stirling isn't really that far away. Yeah. And I would still play on a Saturday morning. So, and then even after having Iona in my twenties, I'd still organize some games with my friends and my dad came to that. So it went the other way from him having me with his friends to me then having him play with my friends. So um, it's just been in the last five years or something that he's not, not played. So I guess, He's always played with me for a huge chunk. Isn't that brilliant? Isn't that brilliant? Yeah. And what were the feathers? He were the feathers or plastic shuttles? What did he play with? 
Oh yeah, always feathers. Uh, oh yeah, my dad hated the plastic, so he said <laughs> they were for ping pong. <laughs> you were spoiled. You were spoiled playing with feather shuttles from that age. That's crazy. Uh, where did you start? Why and where did you start playing? So your dad was the biggest influence, really, right? Yeah. Did your dad ever play in leagues, really, or anything? Uh, he used to play in the Churches League, and at that point, the Glasgow Churches League had a um, small group of people that played in the Paisley area in it, uh, but now it just seems to be the Glasgow um, uh, Churches themselves. So my grandparents used to play in the Churches League, and I think it was Castlehead High School in Paisley or something where they trained, but I can't really remember, but I do remember them um, taking part in that as well. And then they had their friends, because now they used to say, oh, do you know such and such? And, but I mean, I don't really know anyone from the, the past, so yeah. Isn't it amazing? Um, do you remember your first ever racket? I played with a Carrollton, yeah. Do you know what it was? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? How long had you been playing when you got your first racket? Was it Christmas present? Uh, I, I think that when my dad said, let's have a game, I think he bought me the racket before I played and then I just played with it. And That's he had nice. been playing with a Carrollton racket. He seemed to have a thing about Carrollton rackets. I think he played with Carrollton throughout. I don't remember him playing with a different racket. Did he, do you remember him going to tournaments and things when you were growing up? You know those ages when it was he going and playing in... Did he go and play in tournaments and things like that? Because they were I used to play in I used to play in local tournaments, uh, like uh, regional ones. So, um, but the thing is, they seem to be during school time. So it'd be like a school trip that you would go away for them, and the parents didn't actually go along to those. So um, I can remember one where my dad and I went to Linwood Sports Centre the night before, and then. We're playing and then the girl I was playing in the final the next day was on a court with her dad <laughs> and then, so he said uh, oh look and and we looked over and I said to him do you think I'll win and he he didn't say anything and then when he picked me up after the tournament because I ended up a 1 11 nil, 11 nil, <laughs> so there was clearly no problem but um you know that way when you're like 12 13 you doubt yourself and, and then he said well I knew you would win but I didn't tell you that. And I was like, okay. So, um, you know, he didn't give me much information. But no, he they didn't actually uh, watch me play. So it was always like in school time. They used to have uh, like certain types of tournaments and it was like grouped together on certain dates. So I ended up, um, I was overall winner of Renfrewshire even for first to, se first to sixth year, but I was only in first year. So I'd wow. come quite good and quite a short space of time with like limited Definitely. coaching it was just my dad giving me just pointers. your dad and playing regular right yeah yeah so but i wonder what would have happened if i'd played a bit more or if i'd been a bit more committed to it but you know but I, i'm not sure i was um as focused as say someone like my daughter iona is i think the minute you've got parents saying um you must do this or do that then you're not going to get the best so i think Thinking back, I probably was just more interested in the music at the time and the band, and it was just a sort of hobby. Yeah, definitely. I think you've got to have a combination of them both. Interestingly, so what did you do in university when you went? Um, what for badminton or what for did subjects? Do? What did what was your subject? It was languages, was it always? It's languages. Yeah. Um, did you do when you went through your sterling? Did you play then? But uh, you know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I played in the uni team, um, but we had quite a competitive team. At the time, there were a lot of um, students there from Hong Kong and China, and really? and it was it was really the club nights were very good, um, and it was very difficult to get space on the the team uh, because a number of of students that came from these areas where badminton is obviously a lot more ingrained in their culture and yeah, um, and they got a lot more practice. So yeah, the University of Badminton at Stirling University was very good. So my undergraduate was at Stirling and I did uh, German with French and education. Then I went to Strathclyde to do my PGD in secondary education to be a French and German teacher. Um, and then I was on a university team there. And then recently I've been at Strathclyde doing a degree in Spanish to have a third language to teach. And I was on the first uh, uni team there, even as at the mature age I am, still <laughs> managed 
but I mean, I was, it was great because then um, I didn't really feel a place. Everyone made me feel welcome, and I was just like part of the team. Um, Brilliant. And going back to Sterling, if I could, the, when you went, and obviously you've been playing with your dad, and you've been playing in Glasgow and Renfrewshire and these things, and then when you went to Sterling and you met these Chinese peoples, how how daunting was it the first time you went to the club, kind of thing? And how what was the competition like when you know when you played? Were you playing singles then? And and did you have people you competed with at singles at uni when you went there? Did you have anybody you play, competed with regularly? You know, you yeah, had your dad that you played with every week when you... I suppose you were still playing with your dad on the weekends, right? Yeah, well, I had a, a boyfriend at the time who was uh, very decent at badminton as well. He was more of a tennis player, though. He'd been coached by someone who had coached someone at Wimbledon uh, at that point. So he, I used to play tennis with him as well because I played tennis too. So my tennis skills were very good as well. Yeah. But um, he used to, his serve was so strong. They nearly took off my arm when he served at me. So, yeah. Um, so I, I, I said to him, well, I'll play tennis with you if you play badminton with me. So we had yeah. both sports going. So he used to come along to the club as well. And we'd try and get a few games in between the, the club practice or the matches. And we had tournaments at university as well. Um, but, I mean, I loved playing the people... Um, from abroad, different styles and techniques. And that's when I started to get really interested um, in the sport. Whereas I suppose before I was only really exposed to the Renfrewshire players and I'd got used to being the best in Renfrewshire, but I hadn't been able to see out with that. I suppose no one guided me as to what was available out there. So now my eyes were open to what was out there. Brilliant, isn't it? What a sport, I think. Um, what was the name of the first club you went to? Um... Oh, and are you in a club now, Eva? Yeah, um, at the moment I'm a member of, uh, well, if we were allowed to play. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm with Govan Old uh, in the Churches League and I'm in the, the police club on the, the Strathclyde uh, League. Um, and although I'm not a policewoman, um, they do allow non-police people to play in the club. But most of the, the members there are, are have played, uh, sorry, have worked in the police service or are currently working. So, frankly, in you're a ringer. You're a yeah, ringer. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> and but so they're they're teams, but is there a club? Yeah, they well they have club nights as well. Um, you go to them. Roads tend to practice on a Saturday afternoon, which isn't the best time for me because normally every single weekend Iona's got a tournament, so I don't. Weekends aren't good for me, um, but the police club is a Tuesday night, so I go along to that. Yeah, that's good. And that's quite local, is it, to you? Yeah. That's good. Um, do you remember the shuttles you used? You said feathers from the start from your dad, right? What was your dad's name? Alan. Alan, yeah, nice. Okay, good. Um, and were you coach? So who would you say your first... Would you say your dad was your coach, your first coach? Um. Yeah, I... Uh, First coach, yeah, and but the first time I got proper coaching, like one to one private yeah. lessons, was well, probably just after I'd had Iona, um, when I was twenty six, and everyone had said to me, "Oh, well, you're you're too old now to do anything <laughs> sports wise," and that just sets me mad. So, um, I thought, no, I can I can improve in this. So I think it was for my my birthday, my dad got me like some lessons with Ray Stevens. Um, oh, yeah, obviously yeah. A very, um, he was a top player in, in, in the past and and he taught me very quickly how to improve and um, did a great job in the, the lessons that I got. So over maybe a couple of years, I got lessons with Ray uh, on a, week, a weekly basis. Um, and I haven't had private lessons for a long time, but um, I'm still in touch with Ray. Um, What's the best ever tip he gave you, do you think? Um, to get loaded, <laughs> to load my legs, get down low. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, also, yeah. and he used to shout at me, margins, Laura, margins. So always play uh, a court within a court. Yes. So um, I still have a lot of drills and stuff. Did you do that, or was it was it a lot of drills in it, or what? Or did you just with the shadow bomb and that kind of thing, and and just. A lot of yeah, a lot of drills kind of thing. Uh, yeah, just a uh, multi shuttle and uh, single shuttle routines. And how was to... your how was your theory? You know, having played with your dad, was it was it quite like you just kind of muddled along and just played a lot and got quite good? 
and fuddle, fudged your way along, or did it was he um, quite theoretical about how he taught you, or was he did you just kind of go and play and you just were where you were, or did it, was he a coach? Did he do you think he taught you movement and smash and clear and backhand or anything like that, or did you just go and play? I think I just learned the shots from from playing, and I, I guess when by the time I got to Ray. It was learning things like slices, cross nets, all the things that I hadn't really thought about before, just adding things to the basic shots. My dad used to teach me about like you know, balancing arm and uh, keeping your eye on the shuttle and all that. He didn't really so much go into like footwork. Yeah. And I guess I was maybe a bit of a runner. I've always been quite fit and fast around. Well, maybe not as fast anymore, but then I was when I was a child. I used to like running around. Yeah. So I guess by the time I got to Ray, it was about like um, really getting more efficient footwork where I wouldn't have to chase, but I could take fewer steps to get to the shuttle. So yeah. it was just about like refining certain bits. It's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting how you... I'm like that. I, I learned it probably too late as well. I was the same. I run around. Even though I ha after I had coaching, I still think I run around a lot. Uh, I still do now, to be fair. I quite like it. I don't mind it. I'm all right with that. Um, do you remember your first ever tournament and trophy? Um, yeah, the first trophy was when I was in first year of high school and it was uh, like a Renfrewshire trophy for, um, and it had been done in different stages. So I was maybe about 12 at the time. Good. And I've still got the trophy. Um, I threw out, I've thrown out most of the trophies for Iona and myself because I can't store them anymore. So, I, but we've kept the ones that are sort of more memorable for us. Let me see it then. Where is it? Um, hang on. Can you pause it? Yeah, yeah no, I don't need to. I'm all right. Okay, hang on. Sorry, Martin, I think we've put it up in the attic. Oh, have you? <laughs> I know, uh, we just actually, it used to be in this room on the shelves, all was the trophies, but Nikki said we needed to clear it all out because it was Did getting ridiculous. If you post a picture, like when I post, on, when I post a video on Facebook, will you post a picture of the trophy? That'd be awesome. If you could, if you can get yeah. it in the loft, that'd be good. Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. 12 years old. Was that for singles? Yeah, singles. That's your thing, isn't it? Singles. Do you still love singles? I like all three of them. Um, I, it's not that I don't like doubles or mix. It's just, uh, I, I guess, it's just um, been the way it's happened with me, just playing singles more with my dad. I mean, we yeah. did play doubles as well. But for for whatever reason, people see me more as a singles player. So, yeah, I, I think um, maybe as you get older, people expect you not to play it because it's obviously the toughest one. But it's great for keeping fit. Yeah, I'm 50 and I still love it. I'm not very good, but I love it. Um, who's your main competition? Competition? Were, who was your, Did you have a single person that you? It was just your dad, I think. Would you think your main competition? The guy that you tried to beat. I, that question is aimed at the person that that drove you to be best, and I think that's your dad. Do you? Yeah, it was. But uh, when I was at Sterling Uni, uh, Susan Egglestaff, Susan Hughes was there at the time as well. So obviously. She was a, a big figure in Bampton um, at Stirling University at that point, so everyone looked up to her. That's the second. That's the second time I've heard that name. She's yeah. Nigel Staff. Good. Was that buzzing? Um, okay, moving to the current time. We're twenty-two minutes, twenty-three minutes in. Would you believe? Um, what clubs do you play now, and how often do you play? You've told me that. Or, uh, did you tell me that? The police club. Yeah, you did. Um, I've got that up there, that's fine. Um, what's your current favourite racket? What do you play with now? I play with the uh, Yonex Astrox 88D. That's what I've got. Yeah. Yeah. Love that racket. Yeah, it's good. Is it a new generation one or is it the original? Mine's the original. They've, I think they've it's changed a... the colours, they've got a blue one now. All right, no, it must be the original one Red then. one there, yeah. Why didn't you go for the S? Did you try the S as well? The skill? Uh, I didn't go for the S because someone told me it was slightly shorter, and it's like, uh, I it need. Like, I think it's like four mil or something. I think. Yeah. But yeah, I'm five foot six, so any inches I can get on my reach, the better. <laughs> five foot six is quite tall for a girl. 
Um, what tension do you like in your strings? Uh, 26. 26. 26. And type of string, do you bother? Uh, well, Yonex string, just the 65 TL. 65, that's what everybody does, isn't it? How often do you break strings? Uh, I've probably not broken a string in about, oh, I don't know, maybe about one a month or something like that, once a month. I think that's quite a lot. Is it? No, I don't know. I think, I think that's quite, it's certainly quite expensive. <laughs> it's quite, I think that's quite a lot. I think that tension might be too high. Um, how do you manage yeah. family life in badminton? Yeah, so work and family life and badminton and Iona and all of those things. How do you cope with that? So you get to play on a Tuesday night, but Saturdays aren't good because of Iona going to tournaments, right? Yeah. Well, I would like to play more, but obviously she, Iona does play. Uh, she has her commitments as well. I mean, most of it's taken care of at the school of sport, so it's not as bad as it could be. Um, not taking her somewhere every evening, but it's difficult being a teacher because the workload is quite high, especially at the moment. Um, so up to Christmas, it was quite busy as well, uh, teaching all day and then putting work online for, for people that have been self-isolating. So it's been a challenge. And uh, But then I, I did I did feel that we we're going to get another lockdown anyway, so I haven't worried too much about it. Hopefully when we do get back next time to Bampton, we won't get any further interruptions with it. Did you play... Um... Did, were you playing in between there and like later in the year, September time when the lockdown stopped? Were you playing any singles? I played a little bit from um, the middle of September till about uh, end of October. So maybe a number of weeks. But then we had a, a local lockdown here. Oh, that was bad. Like, as well. Yeah, so we had like a lockdown and then we had a week where we were in tier three. And then we went straight back into the, the hard lockdown again. So probably through in the West, we haven't had as much time on court as, as everyone else. Definitely not. It's been absolutely horrendous, hasn't it? Um, so what have you done? Um, I've been doing uh, yoga and uh, fitness classes at home. Uh, Joe Wicks? Joe Wicks? No, um, it's actually the David Lloyd um, classes. So um, I've been just trying new things just to keep strong and fit. And I've got a treadmill as well. Uh, the treadmill is in Iona's room. So when I kick her out of her own room, I go for a run. That's good. We had a we had two treadmills and they both packed in, so we sent them back. Um, yeah, it's been, uh, yeah, it's amazing. That's good, isn't it? And what's Iona's training like? And what is she? Do you play with her as well? Or have you had any outside badminton with Iona? Or does she say, I'm not playing with you, Mum? Or what happened? Oh, well, we did the outdoor badminton in uh, April kind of time. But, oh, my goodness, it was terrible. And we just lost patience and got angry with each other. The shuttles were flying everywhere. And then we tried the, the air badminton Did shuttles. You? They were just breaking our strings so was within that? five minutes. So I thought, well, there's no point in doing this. Um, but we have a little sort of a court around the corner, but it's for like basketball and stuff, but it's yeah. a rubber surface. So we just yeah. did some footwork exercises there, but not, not that often. Um, and when we were allowed back in in September, I did play Iona a few games. Um, but I'm um, sad to say she's uh, better than me now, so it's does a bit she, boring for her. Does she um, beat you easily now? No, I wouldn't say easily, but um, she could beat me easily. But most of the time, uh, we can get some good games. I think it's because we know each other's games. The so rallies well. can be quite good and stuff. But uh, she is definitely more consistent than I am because... She had a bit of training at school, um, although in Tier 4 they're not allowed to train at school, so it's been a bit on and off for her as well, but she's definitely hit more shuttles than I have uh, between the lockdowns. And where does she play now? What age is she now as well? Can you tell me that? She'll be 14 in a couple of weeks. So, so Where does she play now? Is it, is it registered? Is that kind of quite... Kind of scheduled coaching and that regular coaching. How many times a week does she have to play now, or, or does she like uh, to play normally? She's actually not really had anything um, on our in our schedule because they've not been able to really train at school. Um, yeah, because in tier four you can't do any indoor PE, so on our timetable lessons they've not been able to do that in tier four. And then the squads and the clubs haven't been running. 
uh, throughout the West. Um, there was a regional squad for Lanarkshire that she'd been going to. Um, she's been to that three times in total. So that's all she's had. And normally, so in the absence of COVID, how many times should she or would they meet normally? And when do the do the do the, do the is it every night? Is it three times a week? Is it? Um, Probably um, with her school sport training, and on top of that, maybe she does like uh, twice a week. On top sorry, of the sorry, sport. Laura, what is the school of sport? School of sport is uh, Bella Houston Academy in Glasgow, and then they do timetabled badminton lessons within the school day. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah, so most of her training is done there, and she just does a couple of things now and again out with that. Um, the advantage is that she doesn't have her evenings where she has to go to training and she can do her schoolwork. But the disadvantage is she does fewer subjects for National 5. And that's, is that part of the, the School of Sport? What is that? An in government incentive? What is that? Is it, is it a Bella Houston? Is it just one thing that runs only at that school? Or what? what is that? So, yeah. The School of Sport is a, a programme that lets, say, athletes train at in a school timetable as well as their academic subjects mm -hmm. and there are five sports there's badminton hockey um wow. athletics gymnastics and swimming that's brilliant and isn't it so they can join an s1 apart from swimming which is s3 and um they've got dedicated uh, coaches for each sport so um at the moment the coaches for badminton are lena robertson and ian pringle so they take on the badminton side of things and is it only at that school or is, it, is that a nationwide thing? What is that? Um, it, you can attend the school um, irrespective of your home area as long as you can travel to it every day. Really? Um, yeah. But I think it's only, it's only one at in that school, right? It's only at Bella Houston School, is that what you're saying? I think it's only one in Scotland for Babington and then um, there's one in England for um, down in Milton Keynes as well, but it's only one in in Scotland where you can do badminton and your academic stu studies in the school day. That's, isn't that fantastic? Imagine if you had that. You'd be all Sorry? over that, wouldn't you? You'd be all over that, wouldn't you? You'd love that. Who you wouldn't love that? Yeah, I, I think so. They've been doing that for about 20 years now. So it was just obviously just missed me. But yeah, I would have loved that opportunity. And oh, um, yeah. Absolutely I think fantastic. the kids should be uh, really thinking themselves lucky that they get, get that. Um, opportunity. It's actually where Kirsty Gilmore went, went to school. She went to school sport as well. So obviously that's a great role model to get the pupils in and it's train them fantastic. up. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Because you need that. I often wonder about that. Being I'm from the north of England, there were people when I went to Newcastle who, you know, they played before school. You know, they played before school, then they went to school, and then they played at nights. And I used to go to county coaching in Newcastle and I'd see them playing and thinking, I'll never be as good as that. And when I heard how much they had to play to get to that. It's mm -hmm. a different world, right? It's a different world from somebody that plays Monday, Wednesday. I thought I was bad Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then coaching on Saturday and then league on Sunday. But it was scrambled. It was learning on your feet. You know, you learn the game on your feet. I didn't really have the only structure that I had was in Newcastle that weekend, but they were getting coached all week long, right? All week mm -hmm. long. That's fantastic. What a, yeah, it's incredible. Um, what is your, so the question on your, event now i suppose um how do you what's your favorite event now is it still is it doubles do you say or singles doubles or singles or mixed um i like all three um yeah like all three probably had slightly better results in singles so um yeah but probably singles is still my favorite do you learn from my owner now does she teach you things no i uh well no she she, from the technical she point of view, she said, "I learned something brilliant today. I learned this today, and you think, wow, that's really good." No, I mean, I think she sometimes tells me off for being really lazy, which is funny. <laughs> she says, "Mum, you could have got that. Mum, hurry up. You're slow. Things like that." So, yeah, I'm used to the abuse now. But she doesn't really. She wouldn't coach me and say, "Oh, try this or try." I'm, I think she's still got quite a lot to learn in the technical side of things. So she will still. <laughs> um, sometimes take advice from me from that but um i think the difference between the two of us is that she's just faster and more consistent now she's 14 laura yeah 
Yeah, she's <laughs> she's fourteen. I think we're all faster at fourteen, right? I think. Uh, yeah. Is she quite a quiet person, or is she quite confident? I would somewhere in the middle. I would say um, she's not. That's good. Um, do you feel as competitive now as you ever were with badminton? Um, yeah, I, th I think, you know, do you get if angry? you keep... Do I get angry? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> no, I'm quite, quite, um, I'm quite chilled on the court. I mean, I might feel annoyed inside, but I've tried to keep kind of poker face on and just, oh, yeah. you know, no point, um, get, there's no point getting angry. Um, is it about not showing your competitor, showing your your opponent that you're angry? Is it, yeah, I think is it, what is that, do you think? I think if you show that you're angry or upset, then you've already lost the game. Um, you've just explained my years of failure because I'm I'm the world's worst. You do see it, you watch it on YouTube, you're watching, you know, total poker face badminton, you think, I get raging, I like lose it completely. I'm the opposite of what you say, oh yeah. I'm like... I'm like Karina Marin. I'm like swearing at my opponent in the middle of a rally. <laughs> in the middle of a game, I lose it. Yeah, yeah. Martin, have you ever broken a racket through your anger? Uh, no, I've hit myself a lot. I've never smashed a racket, no. I think, okay. no, I tell you lie. I think when I was growing up, I've got one particular, my one of my elder brothers, if I lost against him, I was raging. I've, I used to have a 3.7X, which was alloy. Do you remember the metal ones? And it was, it had a wee strip in the middle of the, the frame, had a... It wasn't just pure round. It had like a the the theory was that that little kind of it was almost like the, it was melted a wee bit. The, the frame was like that. The the shaft was like that. And the theory was because the, because it had that it would make it. And I, but I remember the alloy frame. And if, if you hit it, it the, you did get a head that was misshaped and it was like had a flat bit in it because it wasn't graphite rackets, right? They just smashed them. And back in the day, they just he just had a wee. The round racket was like that, and then you just have a bit like that. Oh, yeah, I remember hitting it off the radiator or something. We had bad holes. But, yeah. Uh, have your facilities always been good when you were growing up with it? Did you ever play in bad holes? What was the worst holes you played in as well? Um, the, when you played with your dad, was it a good facility you went to? Yeah, yeah was it was that? fine. Yeah, I didn't. The only bad holes that I've recently, that I've seen, have been more recently in the Churches League because those are, and sometimes a church hall. And sometimes the hall isn't even like a um, a floor that's even flat. It can be a slanted hall. And sometimes the lines are against the walls and stuff. Yeah. And it's really hard to play when the back line is the wall. And there's a radiator jutting onto the, the court. Mm. So, but yeah, it makes you feel spoiled when you've got somewhere like the Coburn Centre or Scotson to play in. Do you play there regularly, Coburn? Um, it, it's quite difficult to get a court there uh, is it? Is it? because of the the clubs and everything that are on, and and now the senior squad are on are on during the day there, so you can't play until half five, and then it's it's really busy. Is it? But, but that's where the the police club is on a Tuesday, so um, yeah, that's good. good. That's good. Um, that's good. Oh, no, just last, very last question. Uh, thank you. Um, what is it? Do you think about? You've obviously done a lot of sports and a lot of hobbies, a lot of interests. What do you love about badminton? I ask everybody that question. Um, I think I love the the fact that you meet so many people um, and you make so many friends, and there's opportunity to travel as well. And so I've now been able to travel, although not really won many games, but I've been to Madrid, uh, Iceland. I did the Scottish Open once, wow. and uh, a year and a half ago, I did my first seniors tournament in Poland, mm -hmm. uh, so the World Championships, and so it's really great to travel, wow. to see the world and play a sport that you, you love, and um, and the thing about Poland is I didn't have anyone in my own age group to travel from Scotland, so I got paired up with someone from Switzerland uh, for both events, but one was from the German-speaking area, and one was from the French speaking area, and I thought, well, this is great because I can speak to my partner in the language. And they were like, wait a minute, why does someone from Scotland speak different languages? So, like, oh, I was a bit of an oddity to them, but um, yeah. And you met a lot of people through the years, and you connect with these people, you know, all these people over the years. You, yeah, I suppose you connect with them all, don't you? 
fantastic. Yeah. No, fantastic. Well, that's it. I've, have I been blocked? Have I been frozen for ages again? I think for about 15 minutes. Oh, my goodness. Do you wish? Oh, anyway, I'm still recording. That's the main thing. Laura, thank you so much. Nobody wants to see my ugly mug anyway. That's brilliant. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye.